no, share some of the know. things that uh, that we have. Uh, this is Mike Challen. Uh, I'm Alan Fister. We're I'm a member of the Fort Buena Ventura Mountain Men. Uh, Mike has been bourgeois of Bridger a, a few times and is uh, deeply involved up there. So, but we don't get a chance very often to do our horseback mountain men. So we're going to go through some of the stuff we have uh, that that we use and uh, and play with. So, first off, yeah, every mountain man's got to have his good rifle. This one shoots pretty straight up to 25 yards. <laughs> so we'll find out how much how much further later. Everybody here has seen a lot of mountain man stuff, so we're going to go a lot of on the horse horse stuff. So this is my horse, Jimmy. He's been a I've, I've had him a few years. He's a, we shoot off him, shoot around him. He's a pretty pretty good horse for it, and he's also a great pack horse. I can throw a pack on him and pack him all day or for a week, and he he trails right along. Okay, some of the things that I carry, and I'm just going to pull them off as we go. The saddle is just my saddle is just kind of a bare bare tree. It's a wooden tree covered with raw hide, and then just with a minimal rig on it. It's just a one a one cinch around it. I do keep a breast collar because we're up in the mountains enough, and this guy is big and fat enough. I can roll right off the back, still sitting in the saddle. I've done it, so that's why I always use a breast collar on mine. But other than that, it's pretty minimal. This this seat's kind of kind of nice. It does have a little spring suspension right here in the path. This this leather piece is put up here tight enough. There is a little spring in that seat right there. Now when I get all my weight on there, the most of the spring's gone. But <laughs> but but it is pretty comfortable, you know. And and Mike and I we ride enough different types of saddles. Yes, it's very comfortable. We can ride, I don't know, we found we can ride 150 miles in them in a week. So uh, last summer we did a trek uh, that we did that, 150 miles on horseback, no support from any vehicles. And it was, it was a great- Because a lot of the mountain men that came up the main river and waterways came up on boats. There were saddles that were brought into the west and shipped up here on boats for use by the mountain men. We also know that mountain men carved and made saddles out here. Okay, so you had influences, you had a lot of different influences on the fur trade horse equipment. You had Indian influence, you had Spanish influence, you had Eastern influence. And if you were to ask somebody, what did a mountain man saddle look like? You'd probably get a lot of different, in, different interpretations. We do have documentation on, on certain things like the Ashley Contract saddles. We know that uh, some of the early saddle makers were sending up saddles like Grims or uh, yeah, Grimsley and Rice or Childress and Rice, things like these were very early saddles. But we also know there were probably a variety of different things. The, the stirrups, some of them had to be things that were fashioned out here by hand. You might see Indian style stirrups that would be much different. Um, the stirrups that are on my saddle are a bent wood stirrup which requires hot water or steaming. There are guys that will argue that with you. But yet, do we have hot water sources here from geothermal activity and streams and stuff? Yeah. So are bent, bent wood stirrups documentable to that time? Yeah. So you can get into arguments all day long about horse equipment from the fur trade period. Um, my saddle itself is very similar to Allen's in the way it's, it's a, a wooden tree covered with rawhide and this very much is a Spanish influence. Come up from the southwest, you saw these saddles traveling back and forth along the Santa Fe and the Taos trails coming back all the way into St. Louis and they were influencing the saddle makers in St. Louis. Stand still. Um, so set up a lot the same. I've got an oil cloth. Uh, poncho tied to the front of mine. My rifle still hanging in the envelope off the horn. Probably one of the most common ways of attaching a saddle or a rifle or gun to the saddle at that time period. We don't see a lot of full-length scabbards being used at that time. Uh, military used some different types of attachments, but uh, you didn't see the cowboy style scabbard in use much at this time period. Uh, behind my saddle, my bedroll and sometimes shelter, just a big buffalo robe. Um, 
wool blankets underneath the saddle, a Spanish style bit. Uh, again, you may see more English style bits being used in the mountains. You may not see bits being used at all. The Indians very rarely use bits. They'd usually just tie a, a buckskin or rope thong through that space in the horse's lower jaw and their horses were trained to, to be ridden with just that loop around where a bit from a, right, right around here. where an English bit would normally sit in its mouth. So my horse equipment on, on my saddle horse very similar to what Alan is. Um, so while you'd see slight variations depending on what they had available to them, uh, really a lot of things were similar. Um, the breast collar wasn't such a big deal in the pl on the plains and in the east as you got into the Rockies and started doing a lot of climbing and dropping becomes more important to them. So, and again, another thing that you'll find experts will argue that point with you, whether or not they use breast collars or not.